congratulations on the show. Thank you, Scott. Really enjoying it so far. I was a huge fan of the film uh, when it came out, so to see it come back but different is is fantastic. Uh, You've worked with Guy before. I mean, it must be a joy to work with him because there is no one really like him and how he how he makes and perceives There's the world certainly not. Films. There's <laughs> certainly not. He's very unique. Yeah, um, he's one of me. He's one of my favourites to work with. Got to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, I love it. I love working with him. He's he's on it. Shorthand. He sees everything, uh, and yeah, it's a pleasure and a privilege to work with him on uh, these projects. You know. How is it uh, being directed by him? Has he given you any kind of? Has he been someone who's given you like the best advice as a director or the best piece of direction? Or he, I think, guy expects you when you're on the floor to know what you're doing. Mm. So that's why you're there first and foremost. So then he's just chipping away or changing things. But my first day, I do remember this. I I don't think I've told this little story. But my first day in Operation Fortune, um. I was going in, they'd been shooting for about six weeks, and I was playing an American consigliere to Hugh Grant. I saw Hugh, I'd, I'd met him years ago, and he was lovely, and then uh, they, they pulled me in and they said, it was like an eight o'clock call, they said, they're, they're gonna write a scene. And I said, well, I think I was just walking through the on the yacht, I was just walking past a few people, and Carrie always had my briefcase that I have to pick up. It's just a walk, walk isn't it? No, 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 they're writing a scene. And it was like my first day on the job, you know, and I, you always get a little flutter on your first day, even after 30 years. And I think when you don't get the flutter, you need to get out of the game, you know. Mm. And uh, I was like, oh, God, OK. And three o'clock came, four o'clock, five. I'm ready for you on set. And I, I said, uh, have you got the dialogue yet? <clears throat> because I, it's a dialect. I wouldn't mind running the dialogue, you know. Oh, don't worry about that. We'll t- tell you that on set. I saw a guy, and I'd not seen him for like 20 years, 25 years, and uh, it was lovely to see him. And uh, he said, um, Max, bit of bunny here. Uh, walk over here, a bit of bunny with him, and then pick up the bag, dialogue there, walk out, and then you're sweet. We're going in 15, four, that's not a lie. That was the countdown. <laughs> uh, I went, uh, uh, sorry, guy, have you, yeah, what was that? I said, is there anything that you want me to get across here? What specific notes do you want? I said, because I've got to run the dialogue, man, so I don't sound ridiculous. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. And then he gave me some notes and some lines and boom. And I was walking as the countdown went again to sit down at the table thinking, I'm either on a plane out of here tomorrow or I've just got to just remember the, the 30 years experience <laughs> and hope that it kicks in. Yeah. And anyway... Uh, it, it, it worked out, thankfully, you know, um, and um, it was an amazing shoot. I mean, it was a, it was a smaller role for me that, but I was very grateful to be a part of it, and more importantly, to work with him. Uh, and I did tell him, I said, you know, I just love it. I want to do more with you, man. He's like, okay, and, and, <laughs> and then here we are, which is great. So yeah. lovely. With this one, how how involved were you with the costume? Because the character you played's got a very specific look and a very specific demeanor. Well, Lulu Bomtemps, who was, uh, she, was the, she was a costume on, on um, Operation Fortune. She also then, I worked with her on the Midwich Cuckoos, and then she was, she's the supervisor on this. And so we, we, we knew each other quite well. And um, she was like, he's quite an interesting character. He's sharp, and he's ca- kind of like a bit of a shark, is he? I said, yeah, oh yeah, he's a shark. Uh, so let's, get, let's look sharp with it. Um, and... And then um, they brought the, 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 the bins in, you know, the idea, the, the, so, which is quite interesting for me. I don't normally like working with glasses because really acting's about that. Mm. Um, but these had a nice light filter on them. I hope I'm not boring you with this information, no, no, but no. okay. <laughs> these had a, a, a light filter on them so you can see a little bit of what's going on. Uh, and I thought, I thought it looked great. I thought, I th- I thought the character was perfect, uh, perfectly styled. Um, for for the choices that I made for him as 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 a guy uh, for what he represented. Yeah, for you, I know you are uh, a big football fan. What's it like with and knowing of Vinnie Jones as a set with Vinnie Jones? Because he obviously has a persona as football fans or being a footballer, but now he's become this. Well, Vin's a mate of mine. Vin's oh, okay, a, yeah. yeah. So Vin, because I live in. I, <laughs> How I, was that first thing detaching the footballer from from what he's now become this amazing actor? Well, right? I don't. I don't really think of Vin as a footballer. You know, I I I do remember watching Lockstock and saying to a mate of mine, "Vinny's one of the best things in it." Yeah. It, you know, it's so natural mm. and so he's a inertly natural, 
natural actor. And I think certainly in this, um, you know, I don't know much of the show you've seen, but um, have you seen a lot or? I've seen, yeah, first three episodes, yeah. The uh, first three? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Vin does great work. And yeah, I lived in Los Angeles for 23 years and, and Vinny was out there for a long time. And I used to go to his house often and have a lovely time. He's a very generous man, you know. Um, I think Christmas times he'd always call and say, you all right, Max, do you need to come over for a nice bit of Christmas dinner, you know? And I was like, oh, Vin, it's so kind, but I've, I've got my little girls now, so we're gonna put, very generous. But I don't really ever think of Vinny as a, as a, a football player. I just see him as a as an actor, and I think he's solid. I think he's a re really good grafter, you know. Yeah, with uh, with guy stuff as well. And I, I spent most of yesterday watching the episodes, having to pause it to write down some of the amazing dialogue and kind of the zingers and one liners and so on. But when you get a script like that, is there trepidation going into when you know you're going to be performing or having to say something very specific in a very specific Guy Ritchie way, or do you get a really kind of great energy from it, knowing that? Well, there's I some think, stuff in there that's quiet. Yeah, it's a good question. It's a good question. I think you can't. You have to be careful not to fall into the trap of, oh, let's do it uh, as a guy, Richie. I think you have to really make it as natural as possible. Mm. Um, but he does write in rhythms. It's quite. It's quite sing-songy rhythmically. So you, you you have to take the edge off that a little bit to make it real. Because ultimately, I mean, certainly my character in this is, there are some characters that are quite comical, there are some characters that are quite seriously, deathly serious. Mm. So you have to, you, you have to be, gauge it quite, quite carefully. And of course, this one for me was, he's an East London boxing promoter, so then you have to really, with a fine tooth comb, just go through all of the dialogue, go, and to get that, the, the, the dialect right, so you don't sound ridiculous, you know, and, um, yeah, but it it swings, and once you've got that, and 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 uh, you can you can have a lot of fun with it, you know. As you've known him for a long time, and he's still making movies, and obviously this the TV show and stuff like that. Why do you think guys endured for for so long? What do you think it is about him that audiences are always so interested in what he's done? Whether it's this kind of stuff, say stuff like Operation uh, Fortune or Wrath of Man or Aladdin as well. I mean, one of Disney's biggest well, Covenant, successes. Another, Covenant, yeah. I mean, I think. I mean, he started out and pushed the boat out and changed the way uh, the films, you know, when, it, when the Lockstock came out, the, all the speed ramping, all the trickery of the music, how powerful that was with film. Mm. It was very fresh, it was very new. And uh, as we all hopefully have uh, developed and matured with, with our specific choices, so too of, of his film filmmaking techniques, he's very, very, very good on script, you know, uh, and visually he's excellent. He doesn't miss a thing. So, you know he's he's above and beyond a lot of a lot of filmmakers, and I think that's what's given him uh, his longevity. Yeah, it says uh, a lot as well about all the actors that he's worked with. Let's Downey get back Jr. to me. And Guy's and getting you. a lot of stuff <laughs> here now. Let's get back. To, no, I'm only joking. <laughs> uh, well, I really enjoyed the show. I look forward to watching more. But you haven't seen you haven't seen episode six yet. I hope Not you like that. Yet. I hope you like yeah, that, yeah. brother. I so think I've you heard. will. So I've, I've heard, heard in the press room. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so lovely to talk to you. Thanks so much for your time. Thank Pleasure. you for your time, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. So much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, hey you guys. <laughs> hey you guys. <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys. Hey you guys.